What if it's all been a big fat lie? Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with Amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. The big fat lie I'm referring to is the image that we have painted for our viewing audience of car dealers, their sales staff, their car appraisers, and their finance offices. What if it's all been a big fat lie? <laughs> Kevin's being a bit cheeky here today, folks. The truth is that all the stories we've shared with you and the dealer antics we've told you about all sound a little bit unbelievable, don't they? How could any legitimate business possibly be this bad? Stick with us because there's a major learning lesson in this show and you'll need this perspective to survive in today's car market. Unbelievable that a business could be so bad? That's exactly what I thought when I hired in on my first car sales position. The stories about misconduct and borderline illegal activity seemed a bit unbelievable. Oh, sure. I wondered how could they stay in business if they were so bad? Seemed impossible. Wouldn't some of them find the heart and the morals to treat somebody fairly and honestly? <laughs> I seriously thought when getting into the car business that I'd be on a myth-busting mission. I thought I'd learn enough about what goes on in a dealership that I could teach future buyers that they didn't need to be so defensive, that they could enter a dealership relaxed, enjoying what should be an exciting and fun process, or so I naively thought. Author Ramar Sutton wrote a great book on the automobile dealer business model, which is now in its 15th edition. It's titled, Don't Get Taken Every Time. He makes a similar confession as Kevin just did in a chapter titled, What's Wrong with the Automobile Business? The book starts out with a story about a car salesman named Killer Monsoon. You should read it if you haven't. Killer is a fitting name for him because every customer he interacts with gets destroyed, suffering great financial pain and loss. Gets her head tore off. Exactly. Both of us have known people like Killer in the car business, the Andy Elliott types, you know, with the same dismissive attitude about other people. Remar starts his chapter by saying, If you find the previous tales of consumers led astray a little hard to believe, you are right. I've deliberately made them gentler than the real thing, and quite frankly, I wonder if you would believe many of the true life situations I encounter daily as I investigate this rather unfortunate business. I say unfortunate because probably no legitimate business in our country takes advantage of the unwary consumer, most particularly the poorer consumer, as does the automobile business. So true, so true. Do you know how most car dealer employees and the trainers they hire sleep well at night? <laughs> they commonly circulate and believe fabricated stories that go something like this. The customer who pays the most is the happiest. Ugh. And then they all work on trying to make you pay the most. And buyers are liars, as if the real liars in the situation are the purchasers of cars, not the sellers. These types of stories are told and retold at the dealer Kool-Aid dispenser until <laughs> literally everyone in the company memorizes them, can recite them, and believes them. They all nod their heads knowingly when they hear the same lie over again. The indifferent attitudes towards humanity are so widely taught at car dealerships that a dealer employee pretty much can't comment on one of our videos without us sniffing them out for who they are. True. Their word choices and arguments are so distinctive, so tired and worn out. It's like hearing a foreign language being spoken in a crowd of English speaking people. They stand out no matter how hard they try to blend in. It's so ingrained in them. They don't even know they're doing it. They don't. When they lie to you about something or tell you a rehearsed fabricated story, there's little to no conscious awareness that they are just retelling another lie. We hear all the time about indoctrination and propaganda in political circles, but no place on earth exists that has more success in indoctrinating its people than a car dealership. That indoctrination process keeps them in the fold and nearly guarantees they'll never stop thinking or behaving in a way that they were taught. The conscience is numbed over time. If you dare think and behave like an honest person, you get fired. To that point, no honest person has ever lasted four decades inside the walls of a dealership. Pretty much impossible. Right. Dealers keep their employees in line by tantalizing them with a little pot of gold under their noses. You need the killer instinct, they say. Stop being an order taker. The salesman wishing to give real customer service gets chided. Literally everything is about money, and the desire to make a pile more of it on the next big deal keeps the dream of wealth alive, like gambling. Nobody cares who gets hurt in the process, even when it's their own family members. So why would we finally tell you this story today? Because we've come to realize that in a steadily worsening state of the car business, the videos we've published, the lessons and strategies that we've taught you are only effective if you are willing to set aside your sense of obligation to others. Right. You see, as humans, we feel compelled to be honest with each other, to listen to each other, to respect each other, and to be kind to each other. You can't give these courtesies to a car dealer and expect to win. When you walk into a dealership, we are not saying that you should behave like an a-hole, but you must have all of your senses on red alert and distrust anyone you encounter. 
Let me give you all a parallel example that you can understand. If you were crossing the desert in a foreign country with your family and had a large sum of money with you, and you were informed that you'd likely be robbed or molested by the people who stopped to talk to you, would you be wary of any person who approached your group? If the approaching person asked how many women and children you had with you, you'd keep them hidden and you certainly wouldn't tell them. If they asked if you had valuables with you, you would deny the fact that you did. No intelligent person would call you a liar for avoiding their prying questions. Keeping that information to yourself is nothing more than smartly protecting yourself from a known marauder. If the conversation turned uncomfortable and questions got more intense, you'd do your best to walk away from them and hope they wouldn't follow. We didn't give you this perspective way back in the beginning because we knew many would find it unbelievable just as I did in the beginning of my car career and we knew it would frighten some of you into never wanting to buy a car again. But we want you to know that you can survive. You just need to be ready to play hardball. The dealership model was bad enough when we got started in car sales, but yet today the behavior by dealers is actually much worse than when Kevin and I first got into it. Multi-car line dealerships and mega dealers have largely taken over the business and totally ruined everything. The reason the dealer in one town laughs at you is that they know the dealership down the road has the same owner and the mistreatment will be the same. It's not difficult for dealers to collude because they are often under the same ownership. It's a memo from the top down. The only thing that can save the business right now is a huge disruption of the current business model, a reinvention of car sales entirely. It's gonna take a huge disruption. Yep. Well, let's take a short break for this message from our darling Mary Jo. Hello, I'm Mary Jo from the Homework Guide team. Don't Kevin and Elizabeth do a great job? We are so proud of every show our team puts out carefully researched for accuracy, and designed to help car buyers just like you. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and ring the bell so you get notifications of upcoming shows. Thank you for listening. And by the way, if you haven't already noticed, check out the light pattern on the ceiling. Pretty cool, huh? Car dealers are far from being stupid. In fact, they are among the smartest and most savvy of legitimate business types who navigate their daily existence with one foot constantly walking in illegal activity. Right. They get away with it by having huge lobbying efforts in state and federal elected houses. Politicians are definitely in cahoots. The FTC labels dealers with a carefully chosen word, unscrupulous, but they are a small agency with limited resources. The word unscrupulous means things like evil, immoral, crooked, wrongdoers. But the FTC needs people like you to bring the wrath down on the violators. Ironically, dealers often conveniently miscite the law to say that they have to charge you a given fee because of law, and they will do this to win an argument with a consumer while at the same time, they are knowingly breaking the law, trading constantly in illegal activity, which explains why the fines are so huge once a dealer is actually investigated by a government agency like the FTC. This brings us to the point of today's show. Many of you underestimate how important it is to approach a dealership with the same eye of suspicion as you would if you were the person crossing an unknown desert in a foreign country, like the example we gave earlier. There's generally no good waiting for you there, and there are generally no good people waiting for you either. Are there some good people? Sure, but you can't bank on it. You must be mentally tough and you must be willing to make them and yourself uncomfortable. You must be willing to slap those FTC rakes down hard on the table when they get out of the hand with add-ons and fees, and you must handle them with a direct, firm, and pointed way every step of the sales process. You can't chicken out. You cannot be like this viewer who commented on the role play video I did with the finance officer. They said, holy crap, this is brutal. I couldn't pull this off. I'd end up just walking. To which another viewer responded with, yes, you can. You just have to prepare before you go. Practice, drill, rehearse. The second viewer is the one who is right. You can survive. You can win, just like I have and just like our sweet Lillian did. Prepare, practice, drill, and rehearse. I hope you add this video to your homework and preparedness you plan to do before you go into a car dealership because beyond forgetting to do your homework, the greatest mistake you can make is underestimating the enemy, not being in the right mindset. And I mean it just like that. You're combating the enemy. You cannot approach a dealership with the idea in the back of your mind that it can't be as bad as people say. You'll be eaten alive by somebody like Killer Monsoon or Andy Elliott or somebody else who hasn't had a working conscience for years and is completely numb to the fact that he spent his entire time getting to know you just by lying to you. And they just want you to buy and leave before you start doubting the things that they've said. When I finished my first week of car sales training, I came home and told Liz, there's no way I can do this. I cannot say and do the things to people they are expecting me to do. 
I think I should just quit. But Liz said, If anyone can learn this and teach it to other people, it's you, Kevin. And today our lesson is never ever underestimate the enemy. I'd have never imagined that the decision to continue on with that first dealership for the purpose of helping other people would have led us here today. Are you guys thankful that Liz was there and I didn't quit? I can tell you that I personally am thankful for it because I get a lot of joy out of helping all of you. Every time I hear a car buyer who successfully navigated the dealer gauntlet, it's like hearing from a loved one that crossed the desert without getting robbed and molested in our home safe. We celebrate your victories. If you'd like to show THG some love for producing quality car market updates and honest car buying advice videos like this one, the links for tips appearing on the screen will be easy to find in the description box down below the video. PayPal, Cash App, and Venmo. There's also that super thanks button down over there. To be clear, we're not begging anyone for a tip, not even close. Our tip system was suggested to us by our viewing audience. Generous people ask for a way to donate to support our mission, but if a tip isn't a problem for you right now, there's no need whatsoever to be a part of the donor crowd. Just show us some love by subscribing and recommending our videos to your family and friends. We thank you for that. I also want to remind our viewers that we'll provide free black book values for your vehicle you're shopping for or a vehicle that you'd like to trade in. You can text us at 701-441-3399 or email to kevinthehomeworkguy at gmail.com and you'll get an auto response with a roadmap for a successful car deal. If you're out walking the car lots right now, make sure you see Kevin's playlist, THG's Savvy Car Buyers Homework Cram Session. Join the thousands of people who have already done that. And if you happen to be on Facebook, drop by and give us a like and a follow. And don't forget to visit our website too. We've loaded up with free resources for car buyers and now we offer a blog too. All right, if you're new here at the Homework Guy channel, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you get notifications. Join our fast growing group of subscribers and become a part of our family. Thanks everyone for coming back and to all of our faithful subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. The Homework Guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.